I'm Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network. We are learning that one of the top allies to Donald Trump, who was a former top Trump administration official, Cash Patel, was subpoenaed and spoke with the grand jury in Washington, D.C., in the district court, federal courthouse, the grand jury that is investigating potential crimes relating to Donald Trump's stealing government records and keeping them at Mar-a-Lago and potentially other locations, including our nation's most top secret, sensitive, compartmented information. Uh, this testimony took place on October 13th in this federal courthouse in Washington, D.C. It's a very busy federal courthouse while Cash Patel is testifying before the grand jury in connection with Donald Trump uh, obstructing potentially violations of the Espionage Act and concealment and mutilation regarding these stolen government records and top secret compartmented records. There's another grand jury taking place that is investigating criminal conduct by Donald Trump and others relating to election interference and trying to stop the peaceful transition of power. I know around the January 6th insurrection and in that other grand jury, you have Mark Short, the former chief of staff to former Vice President Pence, who was ordered to testify on certain topics that previously Donald Trump had asserted an executive privilege objection over, which the federal court, uh, the chief judge of the court who's overseeing that grand jury ruled that those executive privilege claims are invalid and ordered Mark Short, who previously testified in front of the grand jury in around July, to come back and provide additional testimony on these other topics. And so reporters who were covering uh, actually the Oath Keeper trial um, the, for sedition conspiracy, which is also taking place in the court, as well as a guilty plea, which was occurring across the hallways in the court by a member of the Proud Boys. So think about all the things that are going on. We've got the seditious conspiracy trial taking place for Stuart Rhodes and the leaders of the Oath Keeper. That's going on in the district courthouse. Across the hall, we have the North Carolina leader of the Proud Boys pleading guilty to seditious conspiracy and naming names of other leaders like Enrique Tario, who he says was also engaged in the seditious conspiracy. We have a grand jury with Mark Short, former Vice President Chief of Staff, former Vice President Pence's former Chief of Staff, who is testifying regarding efforts to overthrow our democracy relating to January 6th. And then we have Cash Patel in front of a Washington, D.C. grand jury in connection with uh, Donald Trump stealing government records, concealing them, hiding them at Mar-a-Lago, obstructing justice by not turning over these top secret sensitive compartmented records and other government records. All that is going on. Now, why is Cash Patel going in front of this grand jury? Well, uh, Cash Patel has been identified as one of the individuals who Donald Trump claimed that he had telepathically declassified these records to, and Cash Patel had bragged about it in interviews um, to right-wing radical extremist right-wing media like Breitbart that he's aware that Trump, he claims that he was aware that Trump declassified records, but he states that the lawyers just screwed it up and they never documented the declassification, but he was aware and in the room and he's the one witness that Donald Trump declassified records. But Donald Trump claims that that happened uh, telepathically and he did it just by uh, thinking about it. And this is what uh, Cash Patel told Breitbart on a May 5th interview, which was also, I believe, cited in the affidavit for uh, probable cause with the search warrant executed at Mar-a-Lago, which was signed by Judge Reinhardt, the magistrate judge, on August 5th, and the search warrant was executed on August 
8th, and this is what Cash Patel told uh, Breitbart. He said, Trump declassified whole sets, this is May 5th, by the way, of 2022. Trump declassified whole sets of materials in anticipation of leaving government that he thought the American people should have a right to read themselves, Patel told Breitbart. The White House counsel failed to generate the paperwork to change the classification markings, but that doesn't mean the information wasn't declassified, Patel said. I was there with President Trump when he said we are declassifying this information. Then he basically attacks the media and other people and claims it's fake media and disinformation. And then he goes on to say um, regarding the types of documents at issue, um, and this is a video that we made that I found to be uh, very disturbing. He said, it is information that Trump felt spoke to matters regarding everything from Russiagate to the Ukraine impeachment fiasco to major national security matters of great public importance. Anything that the president felt the American people had a right to know is in there and more. And as I mentioned on another video we made, that right there clearly goes to the intent element of Donald Trump, that he specifically stole these records and brought them to Mar-a-Lago um, intentionally because it fit into those categories of records. Incidentally, we are learning from reporting today by the Washington Post that some of the other records, in addition to potentially nuclear information of foreign countries, include sensitive, highly sensitive intelligence uh, regarding military operations of China and um, Iran's missile system that Donald Trump took and stole and was keeping at Mar-a-Lago. The sources and methods of which are learned would result in Americans being killed uh, as well as our sources abroad being killed based on the lackadaisical handling and potential espionage of Donald Trump based on what he could have been doing uh, with those records. So Patel was bragging about this in May 5th of 2022. Now, pull back for one second here. Classification, whether it was declassified or classified, is irrelevant to the crimes Donald Trump is being charged with or being investigated for or could be charged with. The Espionage Act, obstruction, and the concealment and mutilation statute simply deal with someone like Donald Trump stealing government records regardless of the classification status. Um, what the classification status, though, would show is that they are government records and not personal records that don't belong uh, to him and that he shouldn't have taken. And to the extent he's declassifying or telepathically or otherwise these records of national security without creating any memorandum to let sources know and people know and placing people's lives in jeopardy in many ways and in my view ultimately makes it more egregious um, he didn't declassify it you can't telepathically declassify it you have to generate certain memorandum and notify people if you're going to declassify records he wasn't the president anymore he doesn't have that authority anymore. Um, and everything Patel said is complete BS, but it shows that Patel, who likely should not have had access to these records, despite the fact that leading up to the insurrection, Patel was hired as the chief of staff to the acting uh, head of the uh, Defense Department so that he could help plan and coordinate the coup as horrific and horrible as that sounds to even uh, articulate. I mean, to show these records to Patel when these records are supposed to go into um, sensitive and secret compartmented information facilities or SCIFs and not just haphazardly shown. So undoubtedly, what the Department of Justice was asking Cash Patel before the grand jury are these questions. What did you see? What did he show you? What were the records? 
Tell me about what he said about declassification. What was your understanding about the declassification? Tell me about the documents related to Russia. Tell me about the documents related to Ukraine. You stated here that there are documents of major national security. What were those documents referring to? When did you know he had these records? Where did he keep the records? What did he tell you about the records? When was the last, were you aware if he moved the records? Questions like that, he's going to be asked now. One of the questions are we don't know because these proceedings are in secret, pre-indictment, whether or not he's taken the Fifth Amendment, whether he's answered these questions. Um, but Cash Patel, if he answers these questions consistent with what he told Breitbart, would be further evidence of the crimes that Donald Trump committed. The fact that Cash Patel is being uh, subpoenaed and speaking before the grand jury. And we also believe that he was documents were subpoenaed as well. So his emails, his text messages, uh, other communications, they all use encrypted apps, which we know from the Oath Keepers, the Department of Justice is still able to access. So those records were likely subpoenaed as well. Um, but this shows that the Department of Justice is moving towards an indictment of Donald Trump. They are taking the steps that you would take to escalate this towards an indictment by bringing Cash Patel in, by questioning him, questioning him undoubtedly about those topics. This, by the way, was one of the reasons. This probably would have taken place earlier, right? But what happened, Judge Eileen Cannon had pretty much blocked the Department of Justice from utilizing the classified records they obtained in connection with the valid search warrant executed at Mar-a-Lago on August 8th um, until the special master process concluded. The Department of Justice went to the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals and got an order granting their motion to stay and return the 100 classified records so they were able to question Cash Patel regarding those records, what he knew about them, when he knew about them, why he knew about them, and all of those questions. But this does show the Department of Justice moving in a more aggressive uh, direction, uh, direction consistent with the steps you would take before indicting uh, Donald Trump. And indeed, we have heard reports, I believe Bloomberg reported earlier in the week, that sources uh, familiar with the investigation have stated um, off the record um, or on background rather because they told Bloomberg um, that there is enough evidence to indict um, but the mere we know that it's not really you know it's framed as a shocker a bit bombshell but we know that there's enough evidence to indict but the question ultimately and the decision to indict uh, the line prosecutors will submit memorandum to their supervisors and ultimately it will go before Merrick Garland, given the scope of it, to make that call and to make that decision. He's not going to make that decision before November uh, 8th and before the midterm elections. That's likely a decision that will be made after uh, the midterm elections. But the evidence will continue to mount that Donald Trump engaged in obstruction. Now, just to frame this interview that I just read for you, though, on Breitbart on May 5th, just so to remind you of the timeline here, Trump leaves the White House in January of 2021. U-Haul trucks, takes these records, also uses the General Services Administration to ship these records, but Trump is taking these records, his team is taking these records, and they send these records to Mar-a-Lago. The National Archives realizes that critical documents are missing, thousands of documents are missing, and so as soon as they do that, in the spring of 2021, they start reaching out to Trump and his lawyers. And they start off very nice. And they say, look, we know that you lost this election. And as a one-term president, that there could be you know, certain chaos in having to move when you didn't expect to have to move. Almost being too nice, right? But we know that you took records that don't belong to you. Give them back. And Trump lied and had his lawyers lie and directed his lawyers to lie. And they said, oh, we don't have anything, just newspaper clippings. And the archives said, no, 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 we know you are lying. Give us the freaking records back. 
And then in January, after the National Archives said, we're going to get the Department of Justice involved, in January of 2022, Trump himself packs 15 boxes. That's the reporting that we got. Puts a bunch of newspaper clippings in these boxes and kind of hides in between the newspaper clippings, top secret classified records at the highest level of classification, takes these boxes, gives it to the National Archives, and I guess assumes he thinks they're going to be like, cool, we got everything, thank you. They open these records and they're horrified. They're like, we can't even look at these records. They're so classified. We got to... So they reach out to the Department of Justice and they say, we've got some highly classified records in here regarding our national security. You got to have the person with the right clearances look at this and you got to start investigating this. We think there's a lot more records, but he's keeping records like this. The Department of Justice initiates an investigation. They start reaching out to Trump's lawyers. Trump's lawyers continue to lie. The Department of Justice impanels a grand jury. In May, the, the uh, Department of Justice, uh, through this grand jury, issues a subpoena to Donald Trump to return other classified records and other government records that he uh, stole. Uh, Trump's lawyers, Evan Corcoran and Christina Bob, who claimed she wasn't his lawyer but serving as a custodian of records, puts classified records in a red weld, calls up the top counterintelligence official at the DOJ, has them come to Mar-a-Lago. The top counterintelligence official comes to Mar-a-Lago. Christina Bob's out there. She's got this declaration that she signs with this red weld, makes no objections, doesn't assert executive privilege, doesn't assert attorney-client privilege, just takes this red weld and gives it to the top counterintelligence official at the DOJ and says, here, here's everything, and here's my declaration saying that there's everything. We're done. Great, right? The Department of Justice looks at it and goes, no, you're still hiding records. The Department of Justice knows that Trump is obstructing because they've also, one, he hasn't turned over the records. They've also subpoenaed surveillance footage uh, of Mar-a-Lago. And so they even see an employee on the video moving the records as soon as the grand jury subpoena gets sent to Trump at Mar-a-Lago. Trump orders an employee who used to be like his valet at the White House, who now works at Mar-a-Lago, to move these boxes. So they move the boxes from storage to other areas. Obstruction, you can't just do that. Moves these boxes around. It looks like they're trying to hide the boxes. And so finally, the Department of Justice is like, okay, you're lying for the past year plus. You're moving these records. We're going to have to get a search warrant. So they apply on August 5th with a search warrant. They give basically that detail history that I just outlined right there. The magistrate judge, Judge Reinhardt, um, signs it, finds probable cause. They execute the search warrant on August 8th. And then everything else happens after that, which we've covered ad nauseum in videos. But there was reporting that Donald Trump had these top secret classified records. And that's why on this May 5th day, Cash Patel reaches out to Breitbart and starts saying, yeah, Trump's got all these documents on Russia. He's got all these documents on Ukraine. He's got all these documents on national security. But it's cool because he declassified it all. And yeah, the lawyers may have screwed it up. The lawyers didn't paper it the way they should, but don't worry about it. They're all declassified. We're cool. And that was used by the Department of Justice in their affidavit to say, whoa, what, what did you do? What did you do with these records? And undoubtedly, that's what Cash Patel is being questioned on. Um, we'll keep you updated as we learn more here on the Midas Touch Network. Hey. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, please. It's free to subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. We're on our way to 1 million subscribers thanks to your support. So hit the subscribe button right now. I would be so grateful if you hit the subscribe button. In addition to subscribing, if you want to support the growth of this independent media network, no matter where you are in the world, here is what you can do. Because I always get asked, Ben, I want to help. Well, here's how you can help out. Go to patreon.com slash Midas Touch. 
P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash Midas Touch. There are a number of membership packages. You could join one of the membership tiers. There's lots of exclusive stuff. Read it for all the membership benefits and exclusive content and products and posters and postcards and all of the cool stuff you get. But most importantly, we're not funded by the billionaires. We're not funded by anybody. We have no outside investors. Okay, the both sides media has billion dollar investors and the fascist media gets all this money poured into it. We don't. We are powered by democracy and fueled by you. But with your support, our reach is bigger than them. We want to keep it that way. So if you want to help out, and I always get asked, Ben, please, I want to help out. What can I do? That would help. So after this video, if you can go to patreon.com slash Midas Touch, it's spelled P-A-T, write it down, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash Midas Touch, M-E-I-D-A-S-T-O-U-C-H. Join one of the membership tiers. It goes a long way to help and be a part of this growth in addition to sharing the videos and subscribing, which is great, which is still great. We appreciate you. We appreciate the Midas Touch community, no matter what. I'm Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network. I appreciate you. Until next time. This November is Rovember. Midas Touch just released its brand new collection of Rovember t-shirts and pins to let the country know what's at stake this upcoming midterm election. Go to store.midastouch.com to grab yours. That's store.midastouch.com.